But uh, but yeah, I'm not sure you want to record it for the rest I of the awesome recording. Sweet. So you want me to just take it away and go for it? Yes, please. All right, we can do that. What's going on, guys? How are we doing tonight? I am beyond pumped to chat with you. And Tara, Shane, thank you guys so much for the opportunity to speak tonight. I don't take this opportunity lightly. And my goal tonight is to bring you so much above and beyond value to master this thing to master any negative self-talk getting in the way of you becoming the leader, and more importantly, the spouse or person you need to be to achieve incredible things in your life and your business. So before we start, two things. Just like Tara said, if we could silence the phones, turn off Instagram stories, go away from the kids, put them in a closet, whatever you gotta do, and be present with me for this hour, I promise you I will not betray your trust. I know you can't get your time back. And this hour is going to make such an above and beyond impact in your life and your business. So be fully present here. And secondly, I think it's super important that we take a second and just show some appreciation and gratitude for your leaders, Shane and Tara, on this call right now. They go above and beyond to seek out the best training, the best resources, the best way to help give back to you and help you improve your lives in some way. And uh, I just think we need to take a second and just share some form of gratitude. Throw some gratitude in the chat box with why they are so freaking amazing, why you love them, and just think about where your life is now because they gave you this opportunity, this beautiful gift of Beachbody in your life and how it's transformed your life. Without them, it wouldn't be possible, right? So let's throw some love their way and let's also start with some participation. We're gonna be participating tonight. I'm curious, what is a really, really big goal that you have? Type in a big goal that you have in the chat box, whatever that is for you. And as you're typing that in, I want you guys to realize there's an, an amazing thing about that goal. There is a recipe to making it happen. There is, you know your business building behaviors, right? You have two of the best leaders in the entire company teaching you that. You already know your business building behaviors, but something you might miss is how you go about using your ingredients in that recipe matters. What does that mean? It means you could invite a billion people, but if your mindset is off, you're actually going to repel them. You could have the best training for your team in the entire world, but if your mindset is off, they're not going to do shit, right? In fact, how many of you guys have ever asked the question, like, why isn't my team doing anything? And don't lie, like, have you ever said, like, why isn't my team growing or why isn't my team doing anything? I've asked that too. When I was involved in coaching, that's exactly what I asked all the time. And so you could pour hours and hours and hours into a support group for your clients, but if your mindset is off, they're not going to feel like you're actually trying to help them. They're going to feel like a pawn that you're using. So what goes on in your mind, your self-talk, your mindset, is by far and above the most important piece of all of it. And you've heard that before, right? You've heard do your 10 minutes a day or whatever it is, right? You've heard do personal development. It's so important that you do, right? But instead of just knowing it, you're gonna to begin to learn the process of applying it, especially when you hit a place in your business and your life where things aren't going your way. So you can bounce back faster, so you can get back into that state where you're crushing it faster, okay? So think about this. Where does negative self-talk come from? Where do these limiting beliefs come from? I'll show where mine came from with a couple quick stories. And then we're gonna take those beliefs and show you how to turn them into a tool for your success and your happiness, okay? So you might not be able to relate to my story, and that's okay, but as I go through this quick story for five minutes, think about where your limitations came from or anything you blame or any person you blame or anything that kinda holds you back in your life. Really think about that as I'm going through these stories. So growing up, I had an emotional roller coaster of a childhood. And it gave me some really screwed up beliefs about how life is. And I, it screwed with my idea of success and my belief in my own abilities. And I'm curious, raise your hand if you can relate to the topic of money stress in some way. At any point in your life, whether past or present, money stress. Okay, so I did too. There was, growing up, there was always a limitation, always some form of we can't afford that or some form of why the heck did you spend that much money on this, right? I remember witnessing my parents in screaming matches every single day about money. They eventually got divorced because of it. And I remember one memory, I was probably like 10 years old, and my parents were arguing about why the bank account was getting overdrawn again. And they're screaming, going back and forth, swear words, yelling back and forth. And I go to mom and I'm like, mommy, why do you guys always have to fight about stupid money? And she tells me, she goes, shut the F up, get to your room. I don't want to talk to you. I don't need the opinion of a punk kid. I don't want you to be around me. Go away. I don't need you in my life right now. Like something along those lines, whatever it was. And my dad comes over with a soap dispenser and starts pouring soap on my, mom's, on my mom's head, down her neck, down her back, and just screaming at her for talking to us that way. And so my brother and I are crying. We don't know if we should be mad at dad for taking it up a level 
or mad at mom for yelling at me that way. We didn't understand. We just knew that money equal pain, right? That's what we, that's what we linked to that moment. Money equals pain. Cause whenever it was brought up, it seemed like someone was about to get punched in the face, right? That's what it felt like. And, um, and so I just hated money because whenever it came up, there was always a stress, you know, and you pair that with seeing them overdraft their bank account all the time or the day-to-day -day fights or never having a peaceful Christmas or birthday, always saying no to vacations because of money. And I remember like we were talking about Disney World a minute ago, Tara, like going to Disney World, I have this vivid memory of Disney World always being just this horrible thing because it meant that they were so stressed about going there and it wasn't fun around Mickey and Minnie Mouse. It was just stress and anxiety and just fear because of money. So I believed money was bad. I believed it made you a horrible person. I believed that it tore relationships apart. And money is the reason it took me six years to propose to her. Because I was afraid that if we had money, it would rip us apart, right? And on top of the money, I have a reason for telling all you guys this, by the way. On top of the money, I had a really turbulent relationship with my mom. Raise your hand if you have a turbulent relationship with any family member in your life. Anyone, raise your hand if that's you, okay. So, now let me just say, love my mom. Good person, very good person, big, strong heart, deeply caring, and I've forgiven her for the pain of my past. I've gotten over all that, but getting to that point took some time because I was angry and I was sad, and I didn't realize that she was loving me in the only way she knew how at the time, which was needing complete control, but I have this one memory that happened over and over and over again when I was a kid. It happened like just like yesterday, right? That's how I remember it. I'd be laughing and joking on the school bus on the way home, and I'd see my stop coming up. And I'd start to sweat. I'd get all nervous. My heart would start beating a million miles an hour. I didn't know why. And uh, I'd get there and I'd grab my backpack. I'd walk across the bus down, you know, down the bus steps, across the lawn, type in the four digit code, and I'd get in the door and boom, hit with cigarette smoke. That was the smell that reminds me of my childhood. And I remember seeing my mom puffing on a cigarette in one hand and playing some jewel game on the computer in another hand. And, uh, and sometimes it was, hey, sweetie, how are you doing? I, like, I don't want to discredit the good times, but I would say probably 60, 70% it was a go away. Like, why are you talking to me? Like, uh, I don't need your opinion. Like, and it was nothing, any, it wasn't traumatic in any way. It wasn't like she hit me or beat me or anything, but I never felt worthy of my mom's love. And as a kid, that screws with your head, right? You go, why doesn't mom love me? Like, what did I do? I don't understand. So the reason I should have is because I grew up never feeling like I was enough. How many of you can relate to not feeling like you're enough for something? Okay, so that was a huge challenge for me. And you might have a different story, but I never felt worthy. I never felt like I deserved someone loving me for me. And so it screwed with my, my life. I'd, I'd be like a chameleon. I'd change who I was depending on the peer group that I was in. I always wanted to be up on stage so I could be the center of attention because I felt loved and accepted when smiling eyes were on me. I never felt like I was enough. And you might have a different story, right? But where can you relate? What limiting belief or beliefs do you have now because of something that happened years ago that you haven't forgiven or forgotten yet. Because when you're little, you're incredibly impressionable. And it's in those times that your belief about your abilities and yourself starts to take shape. So when I started my business six years ago, when I built my Beachbody business before I actually built anything out of it, it didn't matter how many people I invited. It didn't matter how many social media posts I put up. It didn't matter how many trainings I created for my team. It always just felt like I was dragging people. I was just stuck. And I didn't understand why I couldn't break through. And it, I thought it was the training I had. I thought it was the way that I was inviting. I thought that it was how I was training my team or they didn't get the love and support they need. But no, it was me. It was this. It was my mindset. And I, I never felt rewarded for the effort I was putting in. How many of you feel right now like you're working your ass off, but you have no idea why things aren't working the way that you want or the success that you deserve in some way? Raise your hand if that's you. Okay. So that was something I struggled with. So I had to figure out how to fix it. And I went on a journey of changing my entire life. I worked on my mind more than I did my business and things started to change. I went on this journey of overcoming limiting beliefs and getting over that negative self-talk that was getting in the way of my life and my leadership ability. And I went on to become the person that would lead me to where I am now. And that led to the creation of my program, Appreciation Academy, which we'll, we'll talk about at the end. That program is how I changed my life. But the reason I tell you all this is because when I tried to build a business, the overwhelming amount of negative self-talk, the lack of belief, and the secret obstacles that I didn't even know were going on up here stopped me in my tracks, okay? So if you take this call seriously, I'm going to give you three incredible points that will take you from that place if that's you or be, be able to help people that are in that place if that's you, okay? So if you take this, this call seriously, you're going to learn three major steps that I took to exploding my life. So number one, write this down. 
Your thoughts are always the reason. Your thoughts are always the reason. The first thing you can do is change the way you think, obviously, right? You've heard that. Change your thinking, change your life. You've heard that a million times. But I'm talking about showing you how. Like, you hear those cliches. You hear you got to think more positive. You hear you got to think in an empowering way. But has anyone ever taught you how to do that? I'm about to. Okay, you're about to learn how to actually rewire this thing. Okay, so you start to tell yourself these stories, right? Money is bad. Building a team is hard. My teammates won't do anything. It's so much easier for Tara, for Shane, whoever it is. I'm not enough. And if you say that BS enough, you start to believe it. Like, have you ever been at a party and you tell a story and you exaggerate the details just so you seem kind of cooler in some way? Like the fish wasn't six inches long. It was three feet long right? Whatever it is, like whatever that story is for you. And so you get some laughs. The next time you go back to a party again, you tell that same story only with more conviction and more exaggeration. And now it's five years down the road. You don't even know what part of that story is real, right? You say to the party with so much belief and conviction because you've said it in your mind so many times. The same thing happens with negative self-talk. Only instead of it being a fun party topic, it sabotages your entire life. So these are your disempowering beliefs, your default software, how you're naturally wired to run. I'll talk about that in a second. And you'll go through life believing these stories, right? And it creates inner conflict about just the way that you live. And it changes the way you lead your life and your business. How many of you sometimes feel like you're forcing people to do things? If that's you, it comes from this. And you're going to learn how to break through that right now. Like if you've ever been sitting there on the couch, wondering why things aren't growing and you're working so hard, but you have no idea how to fix it. And your advice is just hit success club. Just keep working. Just keep trying. Just keep doing your behaviors. It will happen. And then you find yourself three months later in the same spot and you have no idea why you're stagnant in dollar volume. You're stagnant in rank. Your paychecks are the same or less. It's because of this. So to change this, and this is going to sound like really hard to do, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in a second to change this. You have to believe that you're enough before the evidence of your business says that you're enough. That's so important for you guys to understand. You have to learn how to believe that you're enough before the evidence of your business says that you're enough. And you can change these beliefs by changing your questions. Write this one down. Better questions change your life. Better questions will eliminate negative self-talk. Better questions explode your business. Have you ever been at a point in your life where you're trying to convince yourself that you're good enough or that you deserve something great, but you never actually believe it? Like you want to believe it, but you just don't? Like, if you do a goal setting exercise and you have, you know, earn a hundred thousand dollars by June 3rd, whatever. Right. And you have earned diamond by the end of the year, hit diamond by the end of the year. You look at these goals on your sheet of paper and it would be amazing to hit them. It would change your life. Right. You think that'd be so incredible. Shaleen calls it a push goal. Right. You look at that and you're like, that'd be so amazing. But there's that little voice back here, that little voice that goes, <laughs> dude, there is no way you're doing that. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Like it kind of laughs at you. It's just, sitting there, you can barely hear, but just whispering doubt into your mind. Or maybe if you do a vision board and you have your mansion and your, your nice car and your, you know, your debt free sign, right. Or whatever it is. And you look at it and you're like, that'd be so incredible. It'd be so amazing to achieve that goal. It would change everything for me. But there's that little voice back here that says, you are not going to hit that goal. Like just whispering doubt and insignificance into your subconscious mind. You know what I'm talking about? You have to change that thinking. And we can't get into every bit of that in a one hour call. I'm going to give you a tool at the end that can show you how to do that, but we can give you something to start the process. So first, what is thinking? Thinking is nothing more than the process of asking yourself a question. That's all thinking is. It's literally just asking yourself a question. See, if you focus on asking yourself bad questions, you're going to get really bad answers. If you focus on asking yourself great questions, you're going to get really great answers. The mistake I made is I just kept asking myself the same questions and kept working hard, but nothing happened. Right? And there comes a point where you're working your ass off for a couple of years and you start to wonder what's up. It's internal conflict. So let me do an exercise to show you what I mean. Look around the room and count the number of things that you can find that are red. Ready? Go count the things that are red. Ready? Go look for red. Look for red. Count the things that are red. Look for 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 red. Cool. Found a lot of things that were red. How many things did you find that were blue? No idea, but check this out. Look around the room for what's blue. Ready, go. Count things that are blue. Look for 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 blue. How many more things did you find that were blue? 
a ton. You probably saw green and go, that's kind of blue just to feel successful in this exercise, right? That's probably what you did, right? That is how our mind works, okay? So when you focus on what you don't want, aka red, those are the seeds of doubt and skepticism and pain. And those thoughts will grow in your mind like weeds. Remember the quote from Jim Rohn, stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds will grow automatically. Why is that? Why does he say that? What does that mean? Stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds will grow automatically. It means that if you don't program your mind to look for blue, it will automatically find what's wrong. It will automatically find red. It will automatically find why you can't. Why? Because your brain is not trying to make you happy. Your brain's only job is to make you survive. That's it. So at any moment in time, you're always looking for what's wrong. You're always looking for what to protect you from, protect you from pain, right? Where does that come from? Two million years ago, you weren't worried about sharing your vulnerable story on social media. You weren't worried about sending an invite. You were worried about the saber-toothed tiger that was hiding in the bushes that was going to eat your baby. That's what you were worried about, right? And now it's millions of years in the future. You don't have the same fears anymore. You don't have to worry about those things, but we equate the same fear of a saber-toothed tiger to saying, hey, you want to join a challenge group, right? That's how our brain works. So unless we program our mind to look for blue, we will automatically find red. Does that make sense? Not if that makes sense. Okay, so you're going to look for what's wrong unless you program your mind to look for what's right. And guys, guess what? What's wrong is always available to you, but so is what's right, okay? So ask yourself this disempowering question right now. Why am I not enough to build this business? Just ask yourself that in your mind right now. Why am I not enough to build this business? Unless you program your mind to look for blue, what happens? Do you notice that answers start pouring out of you? You start figuring out like, I don't know enough people, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not skinny enough, or I'm not blonde enough, whatever it is, right? And you listen to all those answers pouring out of you. How motivated do you feel when you do that? Not motivated at all, right? And even when you read these books, these positive thinking, motivational self-help books, it doesn't change the fact that you have this voice that says you're not enough. You know what I'm talking about? So I shared a couple stories a minute ago about where my biggest limiting beliefs came from, which are money equals pain and I am not enough. Okay. Those were my biggest limiting beliefs. You might have different ones, but jot down what you think yours are right now. And maybe this will trigger some and throw a hell yeah in the chat box or just a yes. If you want to say hell yeah in the chat box, and if you can relate to any of these, whether past or present, why isn't my team growing? Why isn't my team doing anything? Why can't I get it right? How come people don't want to join me? How come I always mess it up? Why is it so hard to lose weight? Why am I so broke? Why do I never catch a break? Why is it so much easier for other people or Tara or Shane? Why can't I do anything right? Will I always be this stuck? How many of you guys are assholes to yourself like that? Like really? Like think about that. That's being mean to yourself. That's what you're doing. Those are disempowering questions. That is you looking for red. And like we talked about, if you're looking for red, you will not find blue. And it doesn't feel very good to ask yourself those questions, right? I bet it leads to a lot of pain, a lot of procrastination. And there you are sitting and looking at your life, frustrated with the results you're getting. And no matter how much your coach tells you they believe in you, and no matter how much you see other people having success, and no matter how much you see other people having big things, there's still that little voice that says, you can't do this. You know what I'm talking about or am I crazy, right? So when you set a goal, you, your dominant beliefs will determine if that goal comes true. And setting a goal, guys, setting a goal is nothing more than the process of trying to create a new reality as opposed to your current reality. That's goal setting. That's all it is. You're trying to create a new reality, right? So the gap in the middle between where you are and where you want to be is whether you're looking for red or looking for blue. That's it. The gap in the middle of where you are and where you want to be is whether you're looking for red or looking for blue. And until that language is consistently blue, focusing on what you want, you will always find yourself struggling to get to your goals. I know this because I lived it. Have you ever been in the market for a car? And the second you decide you want to buy a 2017 Ford Fusion, that car is at every stoplight, every stop sign, every parking lot, everywhere. Why? Because you started looking for it. You looked for blue, right? That's what happens with success. When you look for what you want instead of what you don't want, you actually start to find it. So let's just use the limiting uh, question of why isn't my team growing? Ask yourself that. Why isn't my team growing? What happens? Your brain actually looks for the answer, right? And even if you're incredibly successful, unless you programmed your mind to look for blue, you'll start to question yourself. That is how insidious negative self-talk really is. Something you need to understand is that your entire world, your entire life, your marriage, your bank account, everything, can be changed by asking yourself more empowering questions. Your brain is nothing more than a Google search engine. That's all it is. 
So it'll answer whatever you type into the search bar. So what if you intentionally reverse what you type in? So change what you're typing into your mental Google. What does that mean? Your brain is looking for an answer to whatever the hell you type in anyway. So you might as well ask it a question that's going to lead to the life that you want, right? Asking why is it so hard to build my team? What does your brain do? It finds all the reasons why, you, why it's so hard to build a business. So that's what you focus on. So you never find the answers to your biggest challenges. When you sit down to work, your brain is looking for why you're not capable. So you don't send the invites. You scroll and scroll and scroll. You don't support your clients. You wonder why the heck more aren't messaging you right now. You don't serve your teammate like a servant leader and care about them and love them. You check in with them like your mom would the first weekend of college. You force them to act, right? That's what you do. And here's what's crazy. There are amazing people and opportunities, blue situations that stumble across your life every single day. But because your software is running on why is it so hard, self-sabotage steps in and you won't even notice that man sitting on the park bench that might have high blood pressure that you could help with Shakeology. You won't even notice that person next door that doesn't know how the hell they're gonna pay for their kid's college education and you have their freedom trapped in your mouth right now. You won't, even, you won't even notice that because you're too busy focusing on why you can't or why you're not enough or red. So let's change it up. Ask yourself this, why is it so easy to live an amazing life? Ask yourself that right now. Why is it so easy to live an amazing life? What happens? You still look for an answer. You don't need to find the answer, you still look for an answer. And even if you're brand new, you find all the reasons why you can do this. What happens if you're brand new? How many brand new coaches on the call, like just signed up, not even Emerald yet, brand new coaches, anyone? Anyone Emerald coach trying to get to Diamond right now? Anyone okay, in that spot? Okay, so let's use that example. So ask yourself this. You can, if you're not to Emerald yet, you can ask yourself, why is it so easy, or why is it so hard to hit Emerald? If you're not Diamond yet, why is it so hard to hit Diamond? So just ask yourself this. Why is it so hard to hit insert rank, right? Why is it so hard to hit Emerald? What do you do? You, you start to focus on how you don't have a big enough network. You start to focus on how it's so much easier for other people. You start to focus on how you're not proof the product work enough yet. You start to focus on what do I do if I do sign someone up? You focus on all the things that could go wrong. Red, when you ask yourself, why is it so hard to hit Emerald? That's what you focus on. That's what you find, right? But you still find an answer. But what happens when you say to yourself, why is it so easy to hit Emerald by tomorrow? What happens? Why is it so easy to hit Emerald by tomorrow? What happens? You still look for an answer don't you? You still look. You don't have to find the answer, but you look for an answer. And you start to focus on the opportunities, the people you can reach out to, the sacrifices you can make to build your business, right? Like John and Susie, that's two people. That's all I need. Cool. I'll ask them, right? You start to, the fear goes away. Can you imagine if you fill your mind with just this one step of that system every day, right? Just this one, looking for blue instead of red. And here's the key. You don't have to have the answer to the question you ask. You just need to live in an empowering question. That's it. Don't have to have the answer. Just live in an empowering question because when you're in the right state of mind, you know what you want and the direction you want to go. The how is going to reveal itself. You'll figure that out. That's, you'll, it'll come. You don't need to know how. You need to know why. That's it. The how will reveal itself. So write this down. Every problem you face is simply an empowering question you haven't asked yourself yet. That's it. Every problem you face is literally just an empowering question you haven't asked yourself yet. So for your life and your business, your homework coming out of this, guys, is to write down all the negative crap that you ask yourself every day. Why am I so broke? Why isn't my business growing? Why am I stuck? Why am I so fat? Why does my husband annoy me? Whatever it is, write down all the disempowering stuff that you ask yourself every day, and then you're going to flip it into its empowering alternative, right? Turn those questions into why is it so easy to blank? Why am I so wealthy? Why is my business booming? Why do I deserve an amazing life? Why am I grateful? Why is it so easy to lead my team? Why am I such a great leader? How would your life change if you asked those questions instead of the other ones? The two questions that changed my entire life are why am I so kind to myself every day? And why am I worthy of living an amazing life? Those two questions changed my world. Why am I so kind to myself? And why am I worthy of living such an amazing life? Guys, life will get 100% easier if you are 1% nicer to yourself. Life will get 100% easier if you are 1% nicer to yourself. Write that one down. So what you're going to do is take those new empowering questions. Actually do this homework, guys. Your life will change, I promise you. Take those new empowering questions and reprogram your mind with them. Put them everywhere. Guys, Like put them on your phone. Record yourself asking them. Listen to it while you sleep. Don't choke yourself on the headphone cord, obviously. Like Listen to it while you sleep. Listen to it while you're driving, doing the dishes in the bathroom, whatever it is. Write them on Post-it notes. Put it everywhere. Can you imagine if you had the alarm 
on your phone set to, why is it so easy to be a loving mother today? Five minutes before your kids walk in the door from school. How would their life change? How would their entire world change? How would they love you more? How would their confidence change? How would you shape and mold them more? Think about that. If you had on a post-it note on your car dashboard, why is it so easy to fall in love with my husband again today? What if you had that question as the last thing you read before you walked in the door? Would you just give him a peck on the cheek and go watch Friends and decompress? What would you do? Or would you jump on him, tell him about your day, be excited, ask him about him? How would your relationship change? Guys, this is just one of the steps that I took to rewire my mind. Just one. Your life will change if you do this. I promise you, it will. Guaranteed will change. And it, so what you're doing is you're planting new thought seeds, right? You're watering them daily with a question. All of a sudden, you stop watering the red disempowering plants, so to speak, and you let those weeds die in your garden. And now the only plants that you water are the blue ones. And within less time than you think, your garden is absolutely gorgeous and it feeds on each other and it grows and it blooms and it's amazing and it's, with, it's just blue with so many plants. It's giving your life oxygen again. And guess what happens when your life has oxygen? When you feel alive from reprogramming your mind to look for blue instead of red, what happens? You start to attract leaders to your life. This business becomes easier. You don't have to force people as much anymore because you're playing ball at such a high level, you're attracting, you're magnetic, okay? Is this one little mindset strategy helpful so far? Think you guys can use this? Okay, let's move on to number two. Write this down. Your problem isn't the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. Your problem isn't the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. What does that mean? It means that when you are so emotionally attached to a goal coming true, you actually make that goal harder to achieve. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be excited or passionate or thrilled or get your hopes up about goals. You absolutely should do those things. You should go at it with everything you got. But what I mean is when your happiness is dependent on a goal coming true, you make that goal further away from you. When your happiness is dependent on the outcome of a goal, losing weight, hitting diamond, hitting million club, whatever it is, when that's when you'll be happy, you push that goal away from you. How many of you find that you're pushing so hard for these goals to come true, and no matter how hard you push, they're just like barely out of reach every time. Like they're just like evading you. You know what I'm talking about or am I crazy, right? It's because it is an absolute must in order for you to feel fulfilled. When you think this way and it's a must and you come up short, which by the way, coming up short sometimes happens when you go for big goals, by the way. That happens sometimes, right? <laughs> Sarah, how many times you miss big goals? A lot, right? This happened all the time. So how do you feel if it's a must happen and then I'll be happy? How do you feel when you don't achieve it? Feel pretty crappy, right? Feel like your self-worth took a little bit of a hit. And let me guess, self-sabotage gets into a slump, right? Compounding negative self-talk. All those stories are amplified in your head. The fish isn't six inches long, it's three feet long. You're exaggerating it and repeating that story over and over again until you believe it. Now it's five years down the road and you believe you're a bad leader when that is BS. When you try to build a business this way, isn't it just overwhelming and intense and stressful to try to solve that? It's like impossible. It's defeating because you have no idea how. So you start to accept it as this must be the truth when it's not. When you can learn to see your challenges as an objective question you're just trying to figure out, instead of being responsible for your happiness, those challenges get so much easier. Huge important note here, and this is the huge overarching theme of my program, Appreciation Academy. Business and success will not bring you happiness. They will not cause happiness. Happiness causes business success. Learning how to be happy now and appreciate the journey and the challenge now is how you overcome the challenge. What most people don't get, and I surely did not get this, is it's one of the main reasons I stayed stuck, is I thought it was wrong to be where I was. I thought that where I was in my journey, I was at a certain weight, I was at a, a certain place in my business, I made it wrong that I was there. I said, I'll be happy when I get somewhere else. Bullshit. You need to learn how to be happy now. If you learn how to be happy now, you'll get to that place. Because right now, where you are in your body, your business, your emotions, whatever it is, that's all you got. So you gotta love it where you're at. Where you are right now is not wrong. It's exactly where you need to be to learn the lessons you need to learn to live the life that you're meant to live. And when you see it that way and you become grateful for the challenges, you start to solve them. But they won't, you won't solve those challenges until you're grateful for them. Honor the struggle you're going through. 
love the struggle you're going through. You don't need to find the answer to your business problem because where you are right now is the answer. So write this down. Seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. Seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. Seeing your current bad is the fastest way to never get to what you want. Okay? So let's step into the common sense corner for a second. Let's say that you're God, the universe, whatever you choose to believe. There's no judgment either way, but just play ball with me here. If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, and you're looking at your creation down on earth, and you have person A and person B. Person A is going, this is so hard. It's so much easier for other people. Why am I not a good leader? Why can't I do this shit? It's raining outside. It's going to ruin my day. Oh my gosh, my pants are going to get wet. All these, like you're just looking for everything that's wrong. You're starting to focus on how you can't do this or how it's so much easier for other people or why you're so stuck and you're depressed and you're watching TV and you can't get yourself off the couch. That's person A. Person B, oh my gosh, I'm not to my goals yet, but I'm having so much fun figuring it out, right? I'm not there yet, but I'm loving how I'm becoming a better leader. It's raining outside. Cool. That means my flowers are going to bloom. Amazing. Right? And oh my gosh, the challenges in leadership are so interesting. I'm learning so much. I'm learning how to be a, more a, of a people person and reach out and care about them. I'm learning how to contribute and serve and love more. I'm learning how to be a better leader, a better me, a better spouse, a better parent. This is so cool. I know I'm going to get to my goals because I love where I'm at. Obviously, I'm making crap up. I'm a fly right now, but think about this. If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, step into the common sense corner. Are you going to give more to the person that's upset about having less? Or are you going to give more to the person that loves what they already have? Just throwing that out there. Seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. And here's what's amazing about this one skill, guys. It means you don't have to work nearly as hard for exponentially better success. Because instead of slamming down on the gas pedal to get to your destination, wondering why you're not going there as fast as you want to and you see all these other cars or coaches flying by you on that highway you're going what am I doing wrong why isn't this working you're slamming down harder and harder and harder and you're just stuck and you don't know why you realize the only thing that's been wrong this entire time is literally just that your emergency brake is on that's it so to go further faster you just you don't need to push down harder you just need to release the brake on your life most people try to climb the mountain of success. Put your goal on top of a mountain for a second. Most people try to climb the mountain of success saying they'll be happy when they get to the top. The problem is that's the same thing as trying to make a beeline for the top of Everest with a blindfold on. Guess what? You're going to fall off a cliff and die, right? Or if you fall off a cliff, it's going to take you way longer to get back on the trail because you got to figure out how to climb up it, right? If you're making a beeline for the top of Everest with a blindfold on, you're not going to get there. And when you fall down, it's going to take way longer to get back up because you don't know what you did wrong right? But if you take that blindfold off and just follow the trail that life gives you and you appreciate the beauty around you as you go and you take water breaks when you need to and you love the snowstorms and the clear days, you love the wildlife, you love just follow the trail. It becomes so much easier to get to the top than falling off a cliff, doesn't it? Even if that trail seems to be going away from the peak and downhill, AKA dropping in rank, AKA a return order, AKA a fight with your husband, whatever it is, even if that trail is dropping away from that peak, you can still have faith that you're on the trail to the top. And when you just follow the trail, wouldn't you agree that hiking down a trail is way easier than sprinting up Everest? It becomes way easier to, have, to meet your goals. When you're in the state of this absolutely must happen and then I'll be happy, how does that come off to your team? How does it come off in your social media posts? How does it affect your invites? How does it affect your prospects? How does it affect your, even more importantly, your relationship with your husband, wife, or kids, right? And most of you are trying to build a business that way. And guess what? It will never work. So and even if, here's the thing, even if you do stumble upon that cliff, you happen to miss some cliffs along, or that peak, and you happen to miss some cliffs along the way, guess what? You still won't be happy because achievement without gratitude for the struggle is failure total failure. So what if you let go? What if you just chill and be okay and happy either way? What if you take the blindfold off? What if you decide to love the ups and the downs, the valleys and the peaks? What if you become committed to reaching your goal, committed to that mountaintop and committed to following the trail and loving the whole way? What if you go on this trip for the experience of hiking and not just the summit? Wouldn't you be like more relaxed? Wouldn't you be happier, less hurt by challenges? And how would that come off for the people that you're trying to recruit? Think about that. And what if every single day you make a decision leaving this call tonight that you're going to work hard, not for the outcome, like that's important, but you're going to work hard for the growth you experience. When you work hard for the growth you experience, instead of just the outcome, 
you're waiting for a result to be happy when you work hard for just the growth and who you're becoming, guess what? You get a result every single day. Because even if there's a return order, if someone puts in, if you drop in rank, whatever it is, if it seems like it's going downhill away from the peak, you realize you're just following the trail and you learn something every time instead of hate something. And when you learn something instead of hate something, wouldn't you agree that building a business becomes easier? Way easier. Like, you know that feeling you have in your heart where you just feel like you're, you're forcing it all the time and you're not getting nearly enough results for the effort you're putting in. What if that went away? Like right now, like tonight, what if you make a commitment tonight to make that go away? What if you become alive again? What if your energy becomes contagious again? How would your life change, guys? Living this way makes success easier. So like I said, the, my program that I'll talk about at the end is how you can do that. But I have one more tip that will make getting to that point so much easier. And I call this the secret sauce, okay? But it's not really a secret. I call this the secret sauce. You might know it as genuine gratitude. So. Write this down. It is impossible to feel pain when you're grateful. It is impossible to feel any disempowering emotion that stops your business when you're grateful. Anxiety, overwhelm, depression, fear, impatience, whatever it is, you literally cannot feel it if you're in a state of real gratitude. Because guys, going down that trail away from that mountaintop, that's gonna happen sometimes. Pain in your life, death of a loved one, a return order, something as small as a return order, or whatever it is. Pain in your life is guaranteed. It's coming. But suffering from that pain is your choice. Suffering is optional and it's up to you. Pain is guaranteed. Suffering is optional. And I don't mean gratitude where you say, yay, grateful I have a roof over my head. Count my blessings. I mean where you feel it in your heart. An actress says that I'll show you in a minute. So, guys, opportunities and situations and solutions, blue, comes to you so much faster when you're grateful for the life you already have. Gratitude is what attracts people to you. It magnetizes you. They want to be part of your life, right? So think about this. You are watching a video about mindset from, you could be anywhere in the world right now. You're probably on a couch or in an office with a blanket on or whatever it is. You're probably wondering what you're going to have for date night tomorrow night. You're probably going to drive your car to your job tomorrow and make a great living for your family or supplement the income for your family, whatever it is. You might take your kids to the doctor to get medical care. You might take your dog to the vet to get treated for hot spots on their arm. And you're probably going to turn on Apple TV tonight and watch Friends or The Haunting of Hill House or whatever you're into right now. And most of you take that for granted. When there is a mother out there that just watched her baby starve to death today, when there are people out there injecting needles into their arm to cope with pain, when there are countries that still live in communism, when most of the world, three quarters of the world, lives on $900 a year. Just think about that for a second. $2.50 a day. You're so accustomed to the miracles happening around you every day, you don't even see them as miracles anymore. Most of you probably view miracles as scarce and don't appreciate how literally everything around you was once a thought or an idea. This team, these teams, Dream Again and Wild Impact, like both of those teams were just an idea at one point. That's all it was. Just a thought they had. So that'd be really cool. And they decided to go for it. They decided to look for blue, which proves that you can create miracles at any second if you want to. We have the tendency to let go of gratitude and make it a rule that we can only feel grateful if something happens, that goal, right? And just what we talked, a minute, talked about a minute ago, that is setting yourself up for suffering. Nothing has to happen. This is so important, guys. Like, if you can take anything away from this call, it's this one sentence. Nothing has to happen in order for you to feel happy. Nothing. Nothing has to happen in order for you to feel good. Nothing. And as long as you structure your life in a way where your happiness is dependent upon something you don't control or something else or a goal or someone, what someone says, then you will never be fulfilled in the way you desire. Even if you have a ton of success, you could be winning at life and feel like you're losing because the scorecard you're using is unfair because it only allows you to feel happy if that next thing happens. And guys, this is going to be hard to hear because you're a bunch of achievers. Achievement without gratitude is total failure. Achievement without gratitude is total failure. If you live in the US or Canada or UK and you're in the bottom 1% of those countries, you're in the top 1% of the world. Top 1% of the world. You are the 1%. You are breathing. You are alive. That should be enough to smile about. And if you're smiling, business becomes easier. A lot of you have these high expectations, right, of what your spouse does, your kids, your team, your volume, your sales. And when your life conditions, the way your life is now, 
doesn't align with what you want, AKA making it wrong with where you are now, you get frustrated. Like you have these expectations of what needs to happen in order for you to feel successful or happy. We need to let that go. And, the, and gratitude can help you get there. Gratitude needs to be a regular practice. How many of you raise your hand if you practice real, not just writing it, but real heartfelt, genuine gratitude every day? Raise your hand if that's you. And if not, that's okay, right? Because you're gonna go through an exercise right now that can change everything. So your view of life literally determines your future. So every single day, condition your mind to focus on being grateful and slowly, the anxiety, the overwhelm, the depression, the fear, the impatience, whatever it is, the negative self-talk, you're not gonna notice it as much anymore. And you're gonna become excited every day. You're gonna become alive every day and people are gonna wanna be part of you every day. I went through a period of time in my business and this is why I can like read what you're going through because I went through a period of time where I knew what I wanted so bad. I wanted my life to change so bad, but I'd find myself on the couch binge watching TV, having these bad days like three, four days a week. And it was terrible. And I was depressed. And even worse than that, I was pissed off at myself that I was depressed. Like I was, I, I didn't get it. I was like mad at myself for not changing my life. And I couldn't get myself to change my life, right? I knew exactly what I needed to do. Like my laptop was staring at me going, bro, change your life already. But I couldn't get myself to do it. And I, I cared so much that my life would change, but I just didn't care in the moment. And then I'd go on these spurts of inviting 200 people in a day. And all of them seen at 5.02 p.m. No one responded. It was perfection, guilt, perfection, guilt, perfection, depression. That's what I went through. And from practicing what I teach in my course, at, at that point in my life, those feelings started to happen from four times a week to once a week, to once every two weeks, to once a month, to once every six months. Gradually, it's like a, a muddy pitcher of water. And I started pouring clear water into it. Eventually, the mud dissipates, right? And now my, my natural default setting is genuine happiness. And it comes from practicing this when you're in those states where you don't want to. And yes, there are times every once in a while where I get a whole woe is me feeling, right? And where I get like depressed and useless that day, I'm human. But I can get out of it in three minutes using gratitude. In fact, what I learned from Tony Robbins that I want to pass on to you tonight is that you can solve any problem in your life or your business in two, three minutes using gratitude as a tool, as a business tool, as a life tool, right? So I don't take credit for what I'm about to teach you. This is Tony's stuff. I just want to pass this last thing on to you from him because it's helped me so much in my life. Okay. So get somewhere where you can allow yourself to feel totally vulnerable where you'll allow yourself to feel emotion, get the kids away, put them in the closet. Like I talked about earlier, whatever you got to do, Get to a place where the TV is off, you're just real with yourself. Allow yourself to feel deep emotions for a couple minutes. If you need to turn your video off on the screen, do it. Don't type in the chat box, don't use Instagram stories. Let's just be totally present because if you're here with me for these three minutes, you can learn a skill that can transform your entire business, your entire life, okay? So we're gonna show you what real gratitude feels like and how it is a business tool. So get somewhere you can allow yourself to feel vulnerable, give you 10 seconds to do it. And when you get there, close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. You're gonna have them closed for about four or five minutes or so, okay? So keep your eyes closed and think of something in your life or your business that stresses you out on a scale of one to 10, seven, eight, nine, even a 10. Think of that thing, keep your eyes closed this entire time and think about it. Seven, eight, nine, 10. And with your eyes closed, raise your hand if you have your situation, it stresses you out. Okay. And if it's something not that stressful, pick something more stressful or you won't fall, solve the problem right now, or you'll be able to pass this on your team. So you got your stress, stressor. Okay, cool. Keep your eyes closed. Shake your body out. Shake your body out. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. Keep your eyes closed this entire time. Take a deep breath. Deep breath in your nose, deep breath out your mouth. And take both your hands and physically put them on your heart. Breathe deep into your heart and actually notice the air going into your heart as you do this. Breathe deep, deep breaths in your nose, deep breaths out your mouth and feel the power of it. Feel your heart beating in your chest right now. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day without you having to work for it. As long as that thing beats you live, it is a gift. You didn't have to buy your heart. You didn't have to earn it. Something thought enough of you to give you this gift of life the moment you were born. You have inherent worth. So take a second and just feel so grateful for this heart that's beating in your chest right now. And just love it. Think of where your life is now, the beauty in your life, all the amazing things in your life because of this heart. And appreciate it and love it 
and feel it. And just take that sense of gratitude into your chest right now and love it for a second and feel it. And now in this state, go back to a memory from your past at any moment, any stage, any time that you can feel grateful for. Any moment that you can just feel deep feelings of gratitude for. Is it when you had your first kid? Is it when you said, I do? What's that moment for you? Step back into that moment and don't see it from the outside. Step back into that moment like you're there. Relive it. See the exact same things happening right in front of you, like you're literally reliving that memory right now. Feel the same emotions you felt then. Breathe the same way you did then. Step back into it and just love it. How amazing was that moment in your life? Feel so grateful that you got to experience that. And just take it into your heart. Stack it on top of your heart for a second and feel so grateful for that memory. And now go to a second memory. What's a second memory? Any moment, any stage, any time that you can feel so grateful for and you can step back into that moment and relive it all over again like you're there. Breathe the same way you did in that moment. See the same things you saw then. Experience the same emotions you felt then. And relive that experience for a second and just love it. Just appreciate it. Take it into your heart and feel so deeply grateful and just feel it. Just let that feeling stack on top of all the other ones. And now go to a coincidence. What's something that you didn't expect to happen that's amazing now? Something that maybe have been painful, but now it led to something incredible in your, in your life, a career, some person you value, your spouse, your kids, whatever it is. You were in line at Starbucks and you met the love of your life. You didn't mean to get pregnant. And now you have an amazing family. What's that coincidence for you? What did it lead to? Why can you feel so grateful for it? It's really beautiful when we realize that life is always happening for us and not to us. So take a second and just appreciate that coincidence and think of everything it led to in your life and where it is now because of it and realize that this life is a gift and just feel it. Stack it on top of the other memories for a second. Feel the gratitude for your heart beating a hundred thousand times a day without you having to do anything for it. Feel, stack on that first memory, stack on that second memory, stack on that coincidence and just feel it in your heart, taking a deep breath in your nose out your mouth, feeling the oxygen going into your heart and breathing deep and notice how your breath has calmed your mind. And feel it in your heart, be grateful. And when you're in this state, from this beautiful state, from your heart and not from your head, from your heart, repeat these words in your own mind. In this situation, go back to that stressor, go back to that stressor for a second, from your heart and not your head. Repeat these words in your own mind. In this situation, all I need to remember is blank. In this situation, all I need to do is blank. In this situation, all I need to say is blank. Because when you feel grateful, deeply grateful, your heart already knows the answer to your most challenging problems. Open your eyes, guys. How many of you found some sort of direction to that stressor in two minutes? using gratitude. Pretty beautiful, right? Like think of what you could do if that's how you approach life every day. Think of what you could do and who you could serve and help if that's how you lived. And this is just, it's beautiful, right? You just found something, a direction, answer to something that you've been stressing about for so long in three minutes. Guys, you have one shot at this life. That's it, one. And most people go through life trying to stay safe and never really going for it. You're not that person. Life could change at any moment. You have one chance in this world, guys, one. But your clock on life is ticking. And at any moment, it could run out. It, guys, you don't control the length of your life, but you do control its depth and its meaning. You were not put here to experience mediocrity. You were meant to take the pain of your past and make it mean something. I took the pain of my childhood and turn it into a beautiful tool to help other people get over the stuff in their own mind. You have pain to create greatness too. What if, just what if those horrible memories were exactly what they needed to be? What if they weren't wrong? What if they created you and they were exactly what they needed to be? What if it wasn't wrong that that person hurt you? What if it wasn't wrong that situation happened? What if it was the best gift you ever received in disguise? Think about that for a second. What if you switched the meaning of that in your own mind? If you learn how to harness those things you went through, harness tonight and use it every single day, 
you can feel fully alive every second of every day and I can actually teach you how. You're exactly where you need to be right now to learn what you need to learn to live the life you're meant to live. The outcome you're looking for isn't the answer. The journey you're on is the answer. And when you can start to see it that way and be grateful for the lessons you learn and grateful for the challenges you face, amazing things will happen. And instead of just knowing that, all you have to do to radically change your world is learn how to make this part of your life. All you have to do is learn how to make this feeling your default setting. When you do, game over. So can you imagine for a second what the world would look like and the impact you could have if you made this way of thinking your everyday? Like what if you didn't need a team call to feel this way right now? Raise your hand if you feel pretty damn good right now, right? Feel pretty good, right? What if you didn't need a team call to feel this way? What if this was just how you responded to situations in your life? What if you adopted that mindset? So if that is you, we've arranged a beautiful opportunity for you to learn how to do it. If you've ever been pushing so hard for a goal, and guys, I'm not, I don't have any poor intentions here. If you've ever been pushing so hard for a goal and it feels like it's getting like further and further away, or it seems like it's getting so much easier for other people and you keep hearing just hit success club, but it's not happening. And you have all these trainings on mindset or not mindset on Instagram and inviting, but nothing on mindset. You don't know how to master this. Or even when you do achieve goals, you don't feel fulfilled or some days where you're going perfection too and it invites guilt sitting on the couch, right? And you can't get over that. Whatever that is, like if you haven't learned how to master happiness and master this state of mind, I've created an online course that will help you do it. That will help you break through all of it. And I mean all of it. The reason you feel stuck is because you have inner conflicts that need to be resolved. And I know this because I lived it. Negative self-talk, limiting beliefs, lack of worth, all those things, secret obstacles you don't even know are going on right now that are keeping you stuck in the same spot. You've heard that cliche a hundred times, change your thinking, change your life. I've created a course that will actually teach you how to change your thinking, how to actually be happy, and how to attract success instead of repel it. And I've arranged a beautiful discount on that program for you. Jen Richardson, I'm sure you know who that is. Million Club member, 15 Star Diamond coach, four-time elite coach says, and I quote, this is the missing link that every Beachbody coach needs to finally see success in their business. And I can go on and on with testimonials. My goal is not to sell you. But the bottom line is this program will get you unstuck. And it's, it's not a business program. It, I'm talking life, marriage, business, happiness, stress level. It'll rip away the layers of pain preventing you from being the coach and more importantly, spouse, parent, mother, just person that you deep down you know you're meant to be. Okay, so those courses on Instagram stories and inviting and push the diamond, they don't work unless this is right, right? An Appreciation Academy gets to the core of everything stopping you. It will tell you how to teach you how to finally believe in yourself, how to silence the inner demons, how to live every day with a smile on your face. Just like we talked about, business and success will not bring you happiness. Learning how to be happy will bring you business success. It's the only course I've ever seen that teaches you how to do that. And it took me from stuck on my couch, wanting my life to change to where I am now. And the results speak for themselves, guys. Check out the page. So if you felt something real from this, if you've been living in a memory that says you're not enough, it's time to stop believing that bullshit and learn how to do that. You've been spinning your wheels, wanting success so bad and not experiencing that breakthrough. I know how you feel because I lived it. An Appreciation Academy will break through that, help you break through that. I promise you that. So um, if you're up for it, uh, Tara's gonna, Tara has a Google form that she can share with you guys with an image that shows you uh, how to claim that discount code if you're interested in it. Um, and Tara can talk a little bit about her game plan and how you want to do this. There's no pressure here whatsoever. Okay, so if you're interested in just learning about the course, just fill out that Google form and I'll shoot you an email with the, the details. I'm not gonna try to sell you, I'm not gonna pressure you. I'm just gonna share, here's the information. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. So before we hop off, I'd love to turn it back to you, Tara, where you can talk about the call and just, just thank you guys so much for the opportunity to be here tonight and to serve you. I truly appreciate it. Um, it's a privilege to serve you and uh, take a look for that form, guys. That, that program will change your life. So Tara, back to you, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm like on like a cloud right now. So here, here's like, this is so different than anything I've experienced. I feel like every training, every call, every push, every mindset thing is all about pushing and pushing and going after it. And like, it, you know, this is just really peaceful <laughs> and refreshing. So I'm so, I'm so excited. I can't wait to do the training. I'm really excited. I know I've talked to Jen and Ali Dar and they are like, this has totally changed things for them and their, their coaches. And I do 1000% 
believe that mindset is key. You cannot fake it. You really can't. People see right through you, even if you're saying all the right words, like you just can't fake it, you know? And, and being happy now in the journey right where you are is so important because, I mean, I've been, I am successful and that does not bring happiness at all. It is your journey. You have to be happy at this point in order to, um, to continue that. Like, this is just, when you said the question of how is it so easy to be a loving mother today? Oh my gosh, that like rocked me to the core because I'm homeschooling right now. So like this course is not going to just help me in my business, but it's going to help me with my kids because we all know as moms, when they wake up, it's like, and then every, all your personal development, <laughs> the book that you were reading goes out the window, right? Because <laughs> your kid can't find a sock and it's the end of the world and whatever it is. And you're sweating. I, I get it. So when you said that, it's like if you can just keep, replay that. And like, I can't wait to learn what, you're, what this is all about because I'm really like all about building a business out of peace, out of love, out of joy out of, um, I, you know, if it's not joyful, then why do it? Right. And if it's not joyful, how are you going to, how are the people that are joining you going to be full of joy? Like, what are you giving them if you're not happy? Right? Like there's nothing, there's nothing to give. So I'm really excited. I'm going to send that Google form out to all my girls, Shane's girls. I know Shane was supposed to hop on but there was a really bad snowstorm and her husband just got home and there's been a lot of fatalities and all of those things. So it's just, yeah, up in Connecticut, they weren't expecting it so be, to be so bad, but we are so grateful for you. We, I, I'm like, I'm all about this. I can't wait to get the recording in, in some of my girls' hands and you're just a blessing to us tonight. Like really, I just feel, I just feel so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's a privilege to serve you guys. And I, I hope you take something away from this that, you know, even if you don't join the training, just something you can use to just love life a little bit more every day and just feel lighter. And that you, you just like Tara said, you, you can't fake happiness, you know, and if you're happy and you learn how to be happy, like your business becomes easier guys. It's just secondary. So thank you guys so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. Thanks everyone for hopping on tonight. I hope you have a great night and we'll, I'll send that information.